need in this country is two new political parties. You should maybe think about doing a 2024 calendar. <coughs> I'm Michelle Jubry and I'm keeping you company right through until 7 o'clock this evening. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's watching. Monday to Thursday, 9pm till 11pm. Join me, Dan Wooten, for two hours packed full of unfiltered opinions, unique takes and fiery debates. I guarantee you blockbuster guests and exclusive reporting with no spin, no bias, no censorship. I think there is a culture of collusion, quite frankly. And no reason to go to bed. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9pm till 11pm, only on GB News, Britain's news channel. In a world of dull and predictable radio and TV shows. Oh, hi. On Mark Dolan tonight, we've got big guests. We drill into the big stories of the day. <laughs> the show adds up to a brilliant listening and viewing experience. Mark Dolan tonight is the most entertaining current affairs show ever. And that's a fact. That's Mark Dolan tonight, Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 9. Only on GB News. Britain's news channel like all families we have arguments every now and then but actually we agree on what the mission of GB News is and that's the most fundamentally important thing. GB News provides the kind of platform that lets all voices be heard. We don't hold back, we're free to say what we really think. Just because some people who live in a tiny little Westminster bubble think that their particular story is important, that's not the most important story for me. And often they will be difficult stories, stories that you won't find on the establishment media. Because what people think in the north of England may be very different to what they're thinking in the home counties. We're going to carry on telling the world what life is really like for households up and down the UK. We love to be in your car, in your kitchen as you're having your breakfast. Whatever you're doing, you are part of the show. If it matters to you, it matters to us. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Good evening. The top story tonight from the GB newsroom. The government is announcing tonight that it's sending an emergency response team to Morocco following Friday's earthquake. The Foreign Secretary James Cleverly saying the UK is deploying 60 search and rescue specialists as well as four rescue dogs. More than 2,100 people have now died after the 6.8 magnitude quake struck remote areas of the Atlas Mountains with aftershocks today causing more uncertainty and danger. And His Majesty King Charles has sent his condolences today to Morocco saying he can't describe the depths of his sadness and sorrow at the appalling tragedy unfolding there. Well, in other news today, Daniel Khalif has been charged with escaping custody after four days on the run from the authorities. The 21-year-old escaped terror suspect had strapped himself underneath a food delivery lorry to escape from Wandsworth Prison on Wednesday. He was tackled from his bike on a canal towpath in Northolt in West London by a police officer yesterday. He will appear at Westminster Magistrates Court tomorrow. Meanwhile, the Justice Secretary says around 40 inmates were moved out of Wandsworth Prison amid an investigation into Khalif's escape. Alex Chalk admitting the prison is overcrowded, but also promising the government's doing all it can. It comes as an inmate at the prison was stabbed this afternoon. The man was taken to hospital, where he remains in a critical condition. The TUC says it's reporting the government to the United Nations over a new UK law requiring staff to work during strike action. The TUC's General Secretary says the legislation falls far short of international legal standards. The government says the law protects the lives of the public, such as in the case of doctor strikes, recently announcing a consultation on how the new law can be enacted. And tonight, the Spanish Football Federation president, Luis Rubiales, says he will resign following the controversy over him kissing a player at the Women's World Cup. The 46-year-old kissed Jenny Hermoso on the lips during the trophy presentation following Spain's victory over England in last month's World Cup final. But the midfielder said the kiss wasn't consensual. In an interview with Piers Morgan, Rubiales says he could not continue with his work. 
And finally, Samo Farah has completed his final race of his running career, stealing fourth place in the Great North Run. The four-time Olympic champion said it had been an amazing journey. He was cheered on and greeted by crowds as he crossed the finishing line, emulating his trademark M with his hands above his head as he did so. The sports star announcing earlier this year that the time had finally come for him to move away from running. You're with GB News across the UK on TV, in your car, on digital radio and on your smart speaker by saying play GB News. This is Britain's News Channel. Hello and welcome to Headliners. I'm Josh Howie. And joining me to sort the wheat from the chaff of Monday's newspapers is comedian and comedy promoter, who's never actually booked me, Paul Cox. <laughs> and yeah, that's my way to do it. <laughs> comedy legend and the person you can blame for making me a stand-up comedian, Adam Bloom. Thank you. Hello, Adam, your first time here. Welcome. Thank you very you're much for having me. You're a comedy legend. Absolutely. And can you explain why I'm the reason you're a comedian? Because you said uh, we were mates and you said, you know, Josh, you're quite funny, you should give it a go. No, no, you did two gigs and gave up. Yeah, and, and then I you said, said you should go back to doing it. Yeah, so you are... Basically, to, so, blame. to any viewers, I apologise for your experience. <laughs> <laughs> what will happen next? That's incredible. Very good. How are you doing, Paul? You're right. Okay. I How think... are those gigs? Yeah. Those yeah gigs. Anyway, let's move on now. <laughs> right. Let's look at uh, Monday's front pages very quickly. We have the Daily Mail: a hostile act in the heart of Parliament. The Times revealed spy suspect in the heart of power. The Eye: UK interest rates hikes set to end. Experts predict. The Guardian: 184,000 cancer cases in the UK this year were preventable. The Mirror, Terror on Our Streets, and The Star, Great British Bunk Off. And those we are front pages. And we are going to begin with the Daily Mail pool and... Not really an advert for smoking there on the front. No, I mean, forget the spy story for a minute. We've got some bigger news, haven't we? Kate Moss looks like she's been on the cigarettes again, having given up the vaping, um, which the Mail has seen fit to put right on the front page. Quite an unflattering photograph, to be honest, Josh. But then, you know, Kate Moss is, is of an age now where she's been smoking for a long time, and I guess this is what happens if you do. Yeah, I mean, Adam, look, I don't want to shame people for looking rougher than they were when they were 20 years ago. But that is that makes me just glad I didn't smoke. I mean, I look exactly the same. I think you should cut to a picture of all of us three 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> that is such a good point, because it's absolutely... I'll tell you what. I don't, uh, 20, well, she looks better that now than I did 20 years ago, so I'm that's, not going I'm not going to draw any conclusions. Anyway, let's do the, uh, the proper story there. Yeah, host, a hostile act in the heart of Parliament. So this is uh, the story on the front of the mail. China was last night accused of carrying out a hostile act in the heart of Westminster after a parliamentary researcher was arrested on suspicion of spying. Right. Now, before we get going, Westminster is probably the whitest place in London, the Houses of Parliament. So why it took so long to find the Chinese spy, I don't know, Josh. Well, do they... Is there any indication of this person's ethnicity? Well, I'm going to... Because this is GB News, I'm going to guess, assume and plough forward with wow. it, Josh. OK, and then when you're wrong... Well, yeah, just yeah, deny yeah, that we whatever. even did the story. Fine. But, I mean, this, the, obviously this is very serious. Mm. And one thing that's always very interesting to me is you never hear stories of, you know, UK man found spying in China or uh, in their part. I mean, it's a dictatorship, so they don't really have a house as a That's because we're so much better. Than... Well, we must be. That's, <laughs> I can only guess. But what, what is quite amusing in this story is the fact that Rishi Sunak has taken their, one of the uh, senior members of... Uh, uh, their political team to task over this, sort of saying, mm. you know, yeah, this is this is not on, old chap. And I can't imagine anyone being scared of Rishi Sunak, let alone China. So I can't, I'd, li I'd like to see that footage. Well, that's it. I mean, Adam, he he took him aside, didn't he? Old uh, Li Li Kuang, and he <laughs> old Sunak took him aside. Probably the 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 no one's going to be physically intimidated by Sunak. No, some, just... something racist sounds going on because uh, what I can think of, I spy with my little eye, and that's dodgy ground. <laughs> that's very dodgy ground. You might just get away with it here. You're in the right place, yeah. Adam. But, Welcome. Um, yeah, I mean, look, the, but what can the UK do? I mean, China is the world's second biggest superpower. Are we, what, what are we meant to do? Like, he's just, I can't even imagine what he said to him, like, can you please stop spying on us? <laughs> well, well, this is exactly it. We can't do anything. I mean, mm. we could be seen. This is theatre. 
global political theatre. Yeah. So we, we identify someone could be spying. Of course there's someone spying. There's not just China spying in our parliament. There's probably Europe and America and everyone else and too. And we spy and everybody spies and that's part of it, surely. But the other thing, Adam, is maybe we should feel quite positive about being spied upon. Like, there's a reason, like, that they are spying on us. Maybe We're worth looking thing. at. Yeah, We're worth exactly. looking at. Yeah. Um, I think we should all let each other spy and just cut all the pretense. No, we don't have to spend any money checking up on each other. Just all agree, <laughs> like a sort of, you know, just a, a nudist speech. Yeah, just you can look at each other. <laughs> just put all of our secrets up on Google. Just put, just put them on Twitter, it's fine. <laughs> right, uh, we're going to move on to The Guardian, Adam. Oh, dear. OK. So, on a serious note, uh, in Morocco, um, there's a village that's had an earthquake and um, 90 of the 200 people affected have died, which is obviously tragic. Yeah. And I always just think, you know, you're living your life. When you see these stories, you go, oh, this is awful. But you have to remember that those people were just living a normal life until that moment. It's just yeah. so hard to imagine because you, know, you see these people crying and they go, oh, God, this is terrible. Ten minutes beforehand, they were living a normal life, and that's what's so harrowing about it. But, yeah, apparently, it's a very new story, 90 of the 200 people have died. Well, let, let's move on to something a bit more um, upbeat. Cancer. <laughs> <laughs> so if they, had, if they had survived, they'd have got cancer anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, apparently, 184,000 cancer cases in the UK this year were preventable, which is a horrible thought. Mm. And this is often linked to um, such, such small print here. Please forgive me. Uh, things like drinking, smoking, and yeah, sunburn. Bad eyesight. <laughs> Cataracts, yeah. Um, so, yes, yeah, so this is things related to drinking and smoking. And you've got to think sometimes you've got to go stop drinking and smoking. Mm. Um, I often think that over a glass of wine every night. Um, <laughs> As you smash my, the mirror. On my sunbed. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, that, I don't really know much more about this story, actually, but it's uh, a preventable case is always a terrible thing to read about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a, it is the humanity of it, isn't it? And that's the thing that we get worried about the most is, you know, losing loved ones, losing our own lives. But, of course, really the angle that nearly everybody's coming from is the cost to the NHS. Mm. And that's why things like this uh, are always such a big story, because we're kind of on our knees in terms of the NHS in this country. And every time there's a preventable case, it means that they go on to get stage three and four and they need serious treatment to hopefully save their lives, and in many cases they don't. But it costs billions of pounds each year. So we kind of have to get on top of it, which is why they, you know, we might sit back and be contrarian and say, I don't want to give up smoking, I don't want to give up drinking. But at the end of the day, it's a cost to us as a whole, as a country, because it's a cost to the NHS. Absolutely. But the second biggest cause they identify here, and cancer research have pushed this, is about obesity. And that's also a huge problem. So all of those issues, the, the other issue that is raised is this idea of the nanny state. At what point does the government step in to ban smoking or cut fast food or whatever it is to prevent these deaths and also to, I mean, in a, it's not a particular license, but save us money? Yeah, sure. Well, alcohol's taxed at 33%, yeah. I believe. So you could say if no-one drank, that'd be a lot less money. So that's not a good idea. Yeah. I suppose maybe there should be a tax on everything that's bad for you that goes straight to the NHS to look after the person who's had it. So when you buy a... a, 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 a I don't want to say any brands. You buy a fast-food meal, maybe it's, like, 80% tax. McDonald's? No, but... Uh, <laughs> but imagine if they taxed, yeah. just as a random number, 80% on all fast-food, and as soon as you bought it, that money went straight to the machine that you're going to need when you have five of them. No, that's an idea. You know, if Lewis Schaefer was here, he would tell you that that exists already. Oh, really? If he's a conspiracy? Is, Probably, he? but you know what? Someone out there has just heard that and gone, that is a brilliant idea and they're implementing it, so well done. Yeah. Uh, we're going to move on to the mirror pool and something quite close to my heart. Yes, and I don't know what that is, um, but it's quite close to mine as well, interestingly. Terror on our streets. So this is all about the Dangerous Dogs Act. The mirror here are taking the lead and saying, finally, Suella uh, Breverman is listening to them and we need to do more about Dangerous Dogs. Now, um, I was attacked by a dog when I was 11, and it's, it, it, it actually triggered sort of a 20-year... A I'm, I'm, I'm kind of over it now, but a 20-year sort of fear of dogs for me, and, and I, was, I was sort of chased by a bit of a, a rabid dog that uh, I, I didn't disturb in any way at all, just came for me and bit me. I was 11 years old, it was 1991, and I can remember it like it was yesterday. And that was an Alsatian, actually, which is not a dangerous breed. Yeah. It'd just been mistreated by and his that owners. that was when you used to be able to run. And I could, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if it had been now, I would have just been lunch. <laughs> I'd have been a bloody good lunch, though, let's be honest. Um, <laughs> but... This is interesting because this always provokes very polarised views. Now, only in the last couple of years have I actually had pets and been around pets, mm. and actually that's taught me to love animals in, in a very different way.
very platonic way, Adam, I hasten to add, but it's taught me to really enjoy animals. However, previous to that, I would have said just, you know, any breed of dog that's dangerous, it's mm. like, you know, is, is partial to eating children, get rid of. But there's always get someone... Get rid of the children, I get rid of the, That's what I meant, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I get rid of the children. But, no, genuinely, I would have just said, look, get rid, I don't understand what the problem is, just get rid of the dog. But there's a lot of people who will have a counter-argument to that. Yeah, I mean, Adam, I, I, I got to be honest. I just think just ban them. These it's this specific breed, bully dogs, brought over from America because pit bulls were um, were were banned. And every day you're reading, you know, some old lady getting bitten, some child getting bitten. It, th there's no need for them to be in this country. No, it's a, it's you... it's a no-brainer, and they should yeah. get muzzles and put them on the owners as well. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. A no, it's a no-brainer. It's ridiculous. And, yeah. in, and in ten years' time, when it is illegal, we'll look back and they go, did you really have those dogs about to walk on the street on their own? Well, look, ridiculous. fair dues for Suella Braveman for getting on it, but fair dues for the Mirror for sticking with this. Uh, they've been on this for a long time, it... and I hope that we actually finally see some action. Yeah. Anyway, um, look, we're going to oh, finish sorry. on the star, Adam. Oh, there is. Oh, yeah. so this is very good news. Um, <laughs> if, if, if you have a job. If, yeah. if you're a boss, this is bad news. If you're an employee, this is great news. The Great British Bunk Off. Millions skip work in the final autumn blast. Um, it's obvious when there's a really sunny day and everyone rings in sick. Oh, I've got that thing that's going round. It's, it's always that thing that's yeah, going round. Interestingly, Nick Dixon was meant to be on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not replacing him. <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm replacing Nick. <laughs> but, yeah, so people are 28 uh, degrees, people are... Are taking their day off work, and you can't prove this thing. You can't prove someone's lying. But the statistics, like everyone goes to work, everyone goes to work. How do you say? Oh, everyone's off sick. You go. Someone's lying. They need some kind of lie detector when you ring in work yeah. that works out. Because I'd like to just go. Are you really ill? They go. Yeah, yeah I got that thing. That thing that's going around. All right. Like you. But you should always be able to have a Zoom call with some. Like I, all you need to do, which I have no idea. You get them to take a. Um, you 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 curry them a thermometer, and they have to do a test <laughs> on Zoom. Unexpected. In front of in, you. And prepared. When you have to have a very, very specific thermometer, they can't have their own one and switch it with a fake one, then you've got to actually show... I've, I've just solved the problem. <laughs> Adam, you are... You are the the problem. Problem. <laughs> That's going to be your headliner's nickname, is the problem solver. That is a pro I've just solved the problem. Just solved, well done, well done. Uh, great. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the front page is given a good seeing to. Join us for the next section with Chinese spies, Iranian spies and cuts to special needs funding, which I couldn't get to rhyme. OK, see you in two. What you get for breakfast is something that, if we do our jobs right, you will wake up to news that you didn't know the night before. It's a conversation. It's not just me and Eamon. We want to get to know you, and we want you to get to know us. From 6, it's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Monday to Thursdays on GB News. Britain's news channel. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the people's channel. Britain is watching. When the news happens, it happens here. And really important breaking news. Breaking news this morning. On TV, radio and online, the news starts here on Britain's Newsroom. All the biggest stories and the answers that you need from across the UK and beyond. Join Britain's Newsroom from 9.30 on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Patrick Christie's Monday to Friday, 3 till 6. We tackle the day's news agenda like you've never seen before. It's high tempo, high octane, the most controversial topics and the best guests. You will not be able to take your eyes and ears off it. I'm not afraid to ask the questions that you really want answered. 3 till 6 p.m. Monday to Friday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. People in Britain, they love free speech, but they also love fair play. I don't care if I'm speaking somebody from a trade union, from the Labour Party, somebody from the SNP. And I think the viewers like to see that actually we can challenge one another, but in a positive way. We think we ask the questions that people want to ask, and often we ask the questions that we wanted to ask in Parliament but never got the chance to ask. So join us every Saturday, 10am till noon, on GB News. Britain's news channel. It's all about family, being in people's living rooms, all the interaction and getting to know who our viewers and listeners are. When I was young, my dad used to say, no, no, stop arguing. I wanted an outlet that would enable me to give my opinion. 
People are going through a really hard time right now. And I know that you don't feel like you're being listened to by the establishment. I came to GB News because it's the people's channel and I want the audience to have their say on the events of the day. We're dynamic, we do something different. Democracy shows that the wisdom of the nation is in its people. I get to travel to find out what the story is from a personal perspective. The British people aren't fools. We know when we're not being told the full story. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. It's the best country in the world. The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent your views. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Welcome back to Headliners. I'm Josh Howie. Paul Cox still hasn't booked me for any gigs, even though he had ample time in the interval. <laughs> and Adam Bloom has just uh, bought uh, out a book with all his tips about comedy writing, but I haven't read it yet, so this is the link. Is that it? Is that it? Is that it? <laughs> best, set, best seller in three categories. Best seller, yeah. Do you want us quickly to say what the book is before we it's, get into it? It's called Finding Your Comic Genius, and it, it's 29 years' thoughts in... 100,000 words, and it's taken me eight months to write it. Yeah. It's a brand new So book. it's a lot of pressure on you to be funny. Oh, he is funny, no. as we know. No, yeah, exactly. He is yeah. absolutely yeah. funny. If I'm not funny, don't buy the book. He is exactly. funny. All right. Well, quite a uh, serious story in The Guardian to kick off with about funding cuts to children with special needs. Make that funny, Adam. <laughs> well, OK, I will. Um, the government, um, they've revealed, The Guardian revealed that there's a covert deal to help cut um, uh, pupils in England with special needs. Um, they're going to cut it by a, a fifth. Mm. Um, and if you're suffering from those cutbacks, that's 20%. Very... <laughs> you should <laughs> make it funny. <laughs> he, he absolutely nailed You're it. You're going to see an uh, absolute spike in sales yeah. at uh, 23 19. Uh, uh, I mean, anyway. what, what a sorry mess, though, eh, yeah. I mean, what a sorry mess. You know things are bad when they're cutting back on the most vulnerable people in our society, yeah. of which these children are. And I don't know why they don't leave the kids alone. The kids seem to be the target of everything at the moment, mm -hmm. whether it's something to do with trans ideology, whether it's to do with closing schools because of COVID and crumbling concrete. Now it's when they get in there, if they need special support, they're not going to get it. Because, and this is, comes down to local councils, which I'm, mm -hmm. I'm loath to blame here, because all of their money flows down from the top or up from people paying council tax. And they've only, there's only so much of it to go around and you just have to ask yourself why can't we prioritize these things differently we spend lots of money on lots of things but some things need to be ring fenced i know this is not easy mm. this is not me coming up uh, with a bloom-esque solution here unfortunately <laughs> but what i would say is some things are simple like yeah. looking after children don't call them simple. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> there all we go. things. All things. things. He just earned his fee in one yeah, second. Yeah. But, um, no, I 100% agree with you. I mean, the other part of the story is that you had uh, the then junior minister, education minister say in front of a committee there are going to be no cuts. And then it turns out that this contract, this company they bought in, uh, which is Newton Europe, which is like... We're going to set up a company, it's going to be about education, we're going to call it Newton. Uh, and it turns out very specifically, it says, we, the aim of their work is to cut the funding by 20%. Then you look into it a little bit further, and what they're trying to do is, basically, it seems like push the problem onto the, um, the normal educational system, the mainstream educational system, by getting these students into there, so they have to burden, be burdened with these costs. Uh, the whole thing's a sorry affair. As you said, and I 100% agree with you, these people are some of the most uh, needy in our society. Uh, education is a priority. And also, and knowing people who are going through all this, it's such a hard system to get the money from. Oh, it's like yeah. trying to get money out of a zone, and it's difficult enough as it is. And it, just the idea of cutting it further, I think, is disgusting. Anyway, but it's it's a huge part of uh, it's billions of pounds. You know. Anyway, yeah. let's go on to uh, some fun stuff now. Terror Guy news uh, in Monday's Telegraph. I actually have a solution, by the way, for that. OK, quickly, yeah. Give them thermometers or distract them. 
Very good. <laughs> I think he might have shares in a thermometer sales business. <laughs> so, Paul, this is a story in Telegraph, and it's so typical, isn't it? One prisoner just ruining it for the rest of them. Yeah, exactly. One bad apple yeah. ruins the whole bad bunch. Uh, around 40 prisoners have been moved out of Wandsworth prison after terror suspect Daniel Khalif's escape, the Justice Secretary We like has to call him revealed. Terror Man here. Terror Man, yeah. Terror man. <laughs> it's what he's become. I mean, he's been caught now, so he's not that terrible. But, I mean, out of the abundance of caution was the, was the language that was used. I mean, mm. out of the abundance of caution, what a load of waffle. I mean, it, sometimes I wonder if some of these people, any colour of politician, if they turned round, we might be able to hear them better, because it is absolute nonsense yeah. the whole time. This achieves nothing. This is just some sort of knee-jerk reaction that we had to do something... Listening to this, uh, you know, covering this story early on in the weekend and listening to this on GB News throughout the weekend, it's quite clear that Wandsworth is not alone, but it is in a terrible state. Mm. And just taking those 40 people out and putting them into another prison where they're in a terrible state is solving no problems well, whatsoever. Is that, I'm not sure if that's what they mean by it. I read through their terrible language, waffle, euphemism, whatever, as... 40 other prisoners who basically shouldn't be in there because, as this guy was, you know, as, as Terror Man was, um, <laughs> he uh, was... He should have been... He, he's a spy, but this is a Category B prison, yeah. and they are arguing that he should be a Category A prison, and I'm guessing this is that they've looked at 40 other prisoners and go, wait a minute, these guys could escape as well. We better sort them out. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I, Adam, did you... You saw this story. It's just... I mean, what a sorry state of affairs. Yeah, I just assumed that 40 prisoners moved on their own accord. <laughs> yeah, 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 just like yeah, under, yeah. under the lorry. Yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. That's like, the best way to go to that prison down the yeah. road there. We do ourselves. Yeah. Bring the lorry. Well, right. crumbling concrete and a spoon. Very good. <laughs> Easy. Telegraph now. Adam, it seems like we, moved, uh, we might soon actually have some strikes uh, about striking. Yes, so um, um, the trade unions report the government to the UN over anti-strike laws. So General Secretary of the TUC says that strikes fall under well short of the standards of the UN's workers' rights watchdog. Trade unions have reported the governments to the UN over dreadful new anti-strike laws. The trouble with the anti-strike law is there's not much you can do about it if you don't like it. <laughs> yeah, that is a that's, very good point. We'll you can't really I mean... The idea that... I mean, this is a bit like, um, you're in, I'm going to go and tell Mum what you've done. I mean, the idea that the UN is our saviour, yeah. to me, is crazy as well. The UN are famous for a, abusing their power in, in many ways. I mean, I, I don't want to go into details here now in case I'm entirely wrong, but, that, you know, from my experience, it seems they are. So it's a bit like asking shipmen to look after your nan. But they're not going to achieve anything here. I think the only way to achieve anything with regards to this is the process we've got already within our own democracy, within the Houses of Parliament. We are going to have a changing in the guard in the next 12 months and inevitably, as a part of that changing in the guard, Labour are going to feature heavily some way or another, whether it's a hung parliament or not. And I see this whole thing changing around. There is... I, I've said this a thousand times and I've certainly said it on this show, I have no problem with striking. We should absolutely have the right to strike. It's about how disruptive it is and how disruptive it is to sort of frontline activities such as the NHS. Mm -hmm. And and to some degree, I have sympathy with the government when of what they're trying to achieve here because they're trying to prevent doctors walking out, teachers walking out. And maybe there are some... some um, Prisoners walking out. Prisoners <laughs> walking out. But maybe there are some um, professions that need to be ring-fenced and said, look, we always need to have a key level of service. Now, I can he almost hear people on Twitter saying to me, but that is exactly what happens, Paul. But we saw a huge amount of disruption this year and last. Yeah, it's constantly... Uh, it's a tricky thing, and obviously someone from the union has basically alluded to this being the the, the, the rise of fascism and bringing up sort of Italy and Spain and I don't uh, Germany in the 1930s, where they banned their unions and basically making striking illegal. Um, there is... Obviously, that is hyperbole, but I believe, as you said, I mean, we, we Adam, you agree we have the right to strike? I'd like to see a comedian strike. Imagine that one. <laughs> God, People yeah. have to do their own jokes. <laughs> yeah. and they don't need us. We're like the, their grandmother does quite a good Jimmy Savile impression. Yeah, but, I mean, <laughs> arguably, the, the reason why we get so such terrible pay is because we haven't stuck together as a union. You know, there's been a couple of attempts as comics to try and start a union. Should we discuss the fee I'm getting tonight? <laughs> <laughs> you getting paid? Wait a minute. Yeah. Right, Good Guardian one. next. And Luis uh, Rubiales has said he will resign, Paul, but he said it in Spanish.
He did say in I Spanish. Ruby, <laughs> I'm not going to attempt Spanish at all to quit uh, in the wake of the World Cup kiss scandal. So this has come after. I mean, by the way, this took place on the twenty on the final of the Women's World Cup, in which Spain won, and it's been entirely overshadowed. Mm. And it took place on the 20th of August, which is now best part of three weeks ago, if not exactly three weeks ago. And I've kind of grown with this story. When I first saw this kiss, mm. as, a, as, as a kind of a British guy, I thought it was way over the top. OK, I was willing to accept that there is some Mediterranean nuance going on here and that's how they were celebrating. And perhaps, you know, I've been kissed on live TV by Lewis Schaefer. I've, I've made no complaint and Lewis has certainly not stepped down. But what, what struck me here is I've never really seen a victim to this because the victim would be the woman involved, but she's never come out to say that she was a victim, really. Well, she has. She's, she's... But, however, haven't we seen footage of her on the team bus immediately after the kiss showing pictures and going, look how much fun we were having there and them all laughing about it? I'm not convinced... And this is dangerous ground to find myself on, but I'm not convinced she is a victim in this. I'm not convinced that she felt she was a victim. But we've got this culture war situation now where we've got to fight um, for the rights of people who maybe even don't even feel victimised. Well, you know, victimhood is a, it's a tricky word, but also it doesn't necessarily happen immediately. The way that you react in the moment is something you have later. The other point that a lot of people say is, you know, imagine if that was your daughter, your grandmother, whatever, um, if he's a bit weird. Uh, but you know what I mean. I, like I just think it's I think it's wrong. Yes. Uh, yeah. That's that that's that that comes down to it. Now there's he has now uh, resigned, not been fired because he's the boss. But then the coach who actually took them to victory resigned for supporting him. I mean his position was always untenable. But I mean it's unbelievable he clinged on as long as he did. Surely. What, to her lips? <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing is when somebody complains later, first of all. She might have been suppressing how she felt for a while. Yeah. Secondly, seeing the footage might then trigger something. Mm -hmm. um, and thirdly, I don't want you to not buy my book on Amazon because you think I'm supporting <laughs> that man. <laughs> um, no, the, the, the point is that sometimes when people complain later, you think, well, maybe someone's told you, you know, you can, you can benefit from this, you can benefit from this. Like somebody else has pretend, told you to pretend you feel something you don't. And I think that's very dangerous when people go, oh, I was really, really violated when they didn't feel it at the time. But you can keep an emotion to yourself and then maybe sleep on it a couple of days and then go, actually, I didn't like that. Yeah, and people react in different ways. And certainly women confronted with someone physical, their boss, arguably, you know, you would necessarily react in that way. And then later on go, wait a minute, that was out of order. Uh, I yeah. believe it's out of order, and I believe he should have resigned. Resigned uh, is strong, but what about apologise? Because we're living in such a cancel culture. Like, when people resign, it's like, hmm. what's he going to do now? He's got a family to feed. Like, you might go, no, he did that. We live in such a, you lose your job. You know, what's he going to do now because of a kiss? It was wrong, yeah. but what's he going to do? I suppose... Uh, two two, could set, two could, words. No, he could send his story to the press. Kiss and tell. Oh, OK. I was going to say women's rugby. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we've made it halfway. <laughs> Plenty more to come, including Chinese marriages and the EU invading our proms, whatever they are. See you in a sec. That warm feeling inside from Boxed Boilers, proud sponsors of weather on GB News. Good evening, my name's Rachel Ayres and welcome to your latest GB News weather forecast brought to you by the Met Office. So there's been plenty of heavy showers and thunderstorms around throughout today and they will continue during tonight. And this is because low pressure is starting to dominate the UK weather, clearing away that high pressure we saw during last week. So into this evening then, showers and thunderstorms will continue for a while, but generally starting to clear out into the North Sea. Though lingering for a little longer across southern Scotland, clear spells in the east, but some mist fog and low cloud developing, and that's all during another warm and fairly humid night. There will be some brightness to start Monday, but any mist fog and low cloud will lift and break before we see this area of cloud and outbreaks of rain spreading southeastwards. Maybe some heavy showers and thunderstorms for England and Wales just ahead of that. But there will be some sunny spells too and feeling pleasant in the sunshine still, even though we're not getting into the 30s, still the mid to high 20s for the highs on Monday. As we go into Tuesday, that band of cloud and rain continues to make its way southeastwards, becoming a little heavier and slow moving as it comes across England and Wales. We're starting to see those winds come from the north across parts of Scotland, Northern England and Northern Ireland. So starting to feel cooler, but generally remaining changeable throughout the week. But most noticeably, those temperatures dropping down to average. 
that warm feeling inside. From Boxed Boilers, proud sponsors of weather on GB News. The Live Desk with me, Mark Longhurst. And me, Pip Thompson. It's here Monday to Friday on GB News. From midday, we'll bring you the news as it breaks, whenever it's happening and wherever it's happening, from across the UK and around the world. Refreshing, feisty, but with a bit of fun too. If it matters to you, we'll have it covered on TV, radio and online. Join the Live Desk on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. So Jubes and Co, we tackle the issues of the day with real robust debate, both sides of the fence, battling it out with me in the middle with my forthright opinions and views. And often really interesting things happen because you start with a position and then by the end of the debate, you find actually, well, I might not have thought about that one. What we need in this country is two new political parties. You should maybe think about doing a 2024 calendar. <coughs> I'm Michelle Jubry and I'm keeping you company right through until seven o'clock this evening. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's watching. Monday to Thursday, 9pm till 11pm. Join me, Dan Wooten, for two hours packed full of unfiltered opinions, unique takes and fiery debates. I guarantee you blockbuster guests and exclusive reporting with no spin, no bias, no censorship. I think there is a culture of collusion, quite frankly. And no reason to go to bed. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9pm till 11pm, only on GB News, Britain's news channel. In a world of dull and predictable radio and TV shows. Oh, hi. On Mark Dolan tonight, we've got big guests. We drill into the big stories of the day. <laughs> the show adds up to a brilliant listening and viewing experience. Mark Dolan tonight is the most entertaining current affairs show ever. And that's a fact. That's Mark Dolan tonight, Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 9. Only on GB News. Britain's news channel like all families, we have arguments every now and then, but actually we agree on what the mission of GB News is, and that's the most fundamentally important thing. GB News provides the kind of platform that lets all voices be heard. We don't hold back. We're free to say what we really think. Just because some people who live in a tiny little Westminster bubble think that their particular story is important, that's not the most important story for me. And often, they will be difficult stories, stories that you won't find on the establishment media. Because what people think in the north of England may be very different to what they're thinking in the home counties. We're going to carry on telling the world what life is really like for households up and down the UK. We love to be in your car, in your kitchen as you're having your breakfast, Whatever you're doing, you are part of the show. If it matters to you, it matters to us. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Welcome back to Headliners, straight into Monday's Guardian. And the King sure has a lot to answer for, doesn't he, Adam? He does. Um, the Caribbean nations are set to demand royal family makes reparations. Uh, for slave trade. Um, Lloyds of London and Church of England also to be approached over their role in past exploitation. There's a lot of shame and embarrassment involved here. Um, ba basically, they're asking the king to apologise for slavery and give them some money. Mm. Now, I don't know how you set a price on that one. He's obviously yeah. got plenty. Well, they, they basically said, uh, he sort of said, not trinkets, not trinket. but <laughs> also they don't want him to starve. No. <laughs> so that's pretty, that's I mean, a pretty a long wide to field yeah. there. Don't just bung us a couple of shiny things. Yeah. I and mean, we know you've got millions of pounds. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. This this stuff, it, it, it winds me up. Surely this is, a, this is a grift, right? It is a grift, and I'm loath to say it because every time you do, you, you find yourself in trouble because, obviously, I'm a white guy. I don't have the background that... You know, of, of oppression, of being, of, of having, you know, a generation, several million generations back that would have been enslaved in any way. However, million generations? I, I reckon it's in the order of a million generations. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> no, it's not. It's about it's obviously six, sixteen it, generations. Yeah, exactly. Like but, yeah. Um, uh, but of course, but it's more about the long-term impacts of that. By the of course, way. The systems. That where do we draw the line? And we, don't forget, we're living. If, if the king has got a money available to give away reparations, then I suggest that he start rebuilding schools, hospitals, and help out special needs children before we start giving it away to wrongs that were done hundreds of years ago would be my solution. Yeah, and, the, and the, when the Guardian then they uncovered this connection of, to slavery and it was through the Queen Mother 
And it's like you go back and it's like this person, yeah, that person and whatever. I mean, we are, it's so, there's such a weak link to it. But also the fact they're going after the Church of England, Lloyds of London, it seems like they, and interestingly enough, Adam, that they have actually avoided going after the government because they've, they've basically said, yeah, the government just aren't going to... I don't have any money. Don't, yeah, don't, don't have any yeah. money. <laughs> uh, pay for too many uh, obese cancer patients and, um, and don't care. But it feels like because the Church of England have apologised, because Lloyds have apologised, uh, it feels like they feel like, oh, we might get, get somewhere with these guys. Yeah, OK. Um, bringing money into it is, is always a bit weird. Um, also, where does the money go? It doesn't go to the slaves, they're dead. Yeah. So the point is, that, but the word sorry is a very powerful thing. Yeah. And um, I think that um, you should always apologise if someone else should apologise. Demanding an apology is a weird one, because if you demand an apology, it means it's not sincere if you get it. Say the word sorry. Sorry, good. Go, I would appreciate it if you apologise, but let's be honest, you should always apologise for what your country's done if the people who've been affected by it ask you to apologise. It doesn't matter, even if it's a million years' time. And here's a better idea. Why don't we change the lyrics to Royal Britannia? Because you always say Britain never, never, never shall be slaves. But we had slaves, which means you won't get us, but we'll get you. Imagine Germany oh. went, Germany never, never, never will yeah, be gassed. Yeah, but I would never go up to a, a German person now and demand an apology for, for, you know, I'll go up to a 20 or 30-year-old and demand an apology for the Holocaust. No, it's not, it's not an individual in the street, though, is it? It's, it's the church well, or the I know, government but, yeah, or, the, or the royal family. Well, it, Germany hasn't got a royal family, have they? Uh, no, not anymore. No, no. they They were Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> but they, 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 oh, they, oh, so I think they, some balance does need to be added to this because, A, a apologising never really solves anything, Adam, and I, I know exactly what you mean. It comes, from a, it comes from a good place, what you're saying, but it never, ever appeases anybody. And Adam used the word shame earlier, and shame is what they're capitalising on. We are continuously told to be shameful of our past, and that is only going to crumble our future yeah. if we carry the on in that way. The same past where we, we stopped slavery, where we spent millions... But the Nazis, uh, all these old no, no, things. but millions, uh, specifically about slavery, millions and lives lost uh, enforcing the, the banning of slavery. Anyway, Adam, enjoy your Twitter feed after the show. Yes. Uh, looks like the police... Well, what, do you mean the, the people who actually think it's good that I actually said that you should apologise? <laughs> oh, you no, mean the yeah. right-wing people go, you're an idiot to think we should... OK, here's, here's the situation. Um, hello, King. Um, you had slaves once. Can you apologise? No. That doesn't look very good, does it? Yeah, but it did, but he didn't have slave ones, and that's no, no, your family. You're, you're, but, yeah, but we're talking. Age. But we all sixteen generations back or whatever. That's about four hundred and fifty people. So if one of your descendants had it, I mean, it's a ridiculous thing. Anyway, look, let's move on to uh, another wonderful and less uh, tumultuous story. Looks like the police are fighting back in this Telegraph story. Uh, surely that means they want to solve more crimes, don't they, Paul? Unfortunately, it doesn't actually. Again, a senior police leader will warn this week that the Home Secretary is in danger of opening the doors to a rhetoric of discrimination after she accused forces of pandering to politically correct causes. And she's right. Suella Braverman, as far as I'm concerned, is entirely right on this. There's one thing the police have to do, and that's enforcing the law. And there is nothing fairer than the law. You can disagree with the law, but if the law is applied equally, nothing is fairer than that. So everybody gets treated the same way, irrespective of their ideology, irrespective of their, of their politics, gender, sex, colour of skin. So if you, if you apply the law... In an ideal law, world. In an ideal world. And I don't forget, you, you know, I know this sounds ideological, but a lot of other things will fall into place if the police just get on with their job, cos the optics are terrible. You know, they are not dancing at carnival in, in the trans flag every day of the week, but that's the picture we've got in our mind because they did it once. So if they just stick to what they're supposed to do, then it'll get rid of all of that and, and the perception of the police will improve, I think. Yeah, I mean, Adam, th this is... I don't know, because you, you, obviously it's your first time on the show, but this is a somewhat regular story of Soyla Braveman calling out the police them not doing anything, then some ridiculous story of the police arresting some 70-year-old lesbian pensioner for taking a photo of a sticker, and then Suella Braveman going, could you guys just get on with stopping knife crime? OK, OK. So that, that's the gist of it. I mean, wh what do you think here? I mean, there is a balance between inclusion and I don't, also I, stopping crime. I don't fully understand it. Are they basically saying that the police are spending too much time trying to be woke when they're not doing their jobs properly. Is yes, that the point? exactly. Um, it's an interesting when there was a thing in the army where people were being told to use soft language when they're talking about killing people. Yeah. yeah. You might offend your fellow soldiers if you use the wrong word for the bullet going into someone's head. Now, that's obviously... Let's, let's focus on the fact you've just killed someone. Oh, no, you just triggered me with your trigger. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
so, so I think that, yes. But the trouble is, when somebody goes, you're being too woke, now everyone who's anti-woke goes, yeah! Wokeness simply means an awareness of social injustice, particularly regarding race. So everyone should be woke. And the trouble is, now the word woke is associated with people who are extreme left. And anyone who's in the middle goes, oh, it's going to be woke, but those people are really being... Well, that enough. was the original meaning, and yes, it's, it's, it's taken on a more it, fascistic meaning. But it's, well, it's, it's been used by people who don't know what it means, actually. The word woke means awareness of social but, injustice. Well, you can't also change. change. No, no, well, the dictionary hasn't changed it. People well, are using... Well, this, well there actually, uh, some dictionaries have changed it. OK, the, whether they have or not, people are now thinking the word woke means vegan people who moan a lot. And the fact of the matter is everyone should be woke. It just means you're aware. Well, let's use aware then. Right, more Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm aware that I'm boring you. No, no, you no, you're not boring me at all. I'm just, I'm excited to uh, see all, all the abuse you're going to get. <laughs> I, I treat my slaves very well. <laughs> good for you, mate. Yes. Me too. Very good. More Guardian. It seems like China, uh, Chinese women want to get married. Surely that's not going to catch on. Is it Adam? <laughs> 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 And we'll move on to the next story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this me? Is this me one? Yeah, is this is you. you. <laughs> I know you're enjoying it. <laughs> it's just, it's just the most I've ever laughed <laughs> on television. Um, shame no one's watching. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am... Um, so, yes, OK, basically, in China, a lot of girls on social media are dressing a certain way, wearing a certain type of makeup that looks good for marriage. So, basically, I think there's amount of women reproducing is down in China, which surely can't be a bad thing if there's a billion of them. Yeah. But nonetheless, so the backlash is social media is causing women to now dress a certain way to please men so they can get a husband. So they're pandering to male needs and, and what they, how they perceive a man. I suppose the equivalent here would be a low-cut top. Yeah. So, but I mean, this, they've got a problem in China, don't they? And lots of countries have a problem. I mean, so they've got Sunak on their case yeah. coming up to them. All of you stop spying on us. But also, yeah. there's this whole idea of this replacement rate. And now this year is the lowest birth rate in in Chinese Chinese history. I think for the last sixty years. So this, they've got a declining population now. So they need people to be getting married to procreate. Well, yeah. Or maybe they should do alco pops and just get like a good teenage. Uh, pregnancy rate going like we had in the 80s. There's so... <laughs> well, the thing about this is there is so much going on. A, you never know what to believe about China. You never know whether to believe any of their data that comes out. So, of course, they had a one-child policy for 20, 30 years or whatever it was, and, of course, that's had an impact on the growth of their population. I mean, you don't, with regards to, you know, dressing for marriage, that's not how it works. You don't dress for the job you want. If everyone dressed like a middle-aged married woman, nobody would get married. I mean, you do have to look at this from a heterosexual perspective. You've just revealed a lot about your life. Well, yeah, well maybe, yeah. <laughs> I do like to dress yeah. as a uh, middle-aged married woman. Um, but the idea is that we, we should dress to, uh, to attract our mate. Fair enough. Well, that's... Uh... Adam, single. No, can I just say, I, no, no, I, I was no, on Bumble, but please let me say this. No, 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 you can't, you can't. We've got to go, seriously. Uh, <laughs> tune up, come back, see what Adam says in the next section. The last section coming up with the rise of robots and fat kids, basically the plot to Wally. See you there. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deebs & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Jacob Rees-Mogg. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. Now then, Lee Anderson here. Join me on GB News on my show, The Real World, every Friday at 7 p.m. I'm not eating bloody cat. Are you Delicious. Mental? Pretty mouth. OK, here comes, a, here comes a train. Reminds me of the scene in Singing in the Rain. Adam, is that a good one? Whoa! Whoa! Join me at 7 on GB News, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomney, on Sunday mornings from 9.30, taking the politicians to task and breaking out of SW1 to see how their decisions are affecting you across the UK. Bursting the Westminster bubble every Sunday morning, only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's watching. Join us every night on GB News at 11pm for Headliners, which is three top comedians going through the next day's news stories, which is exactly what you need, because when the establishment has gone crazy, you need some craziness to make sense of it. So join us 11pm every night on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. 
Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11 a.m. on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I joined GB News because I was sick and tired of not hearing my views being represented, not just mine, but so many people that I knew and spoke to. Oh, I just couldn't get my voice out there. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't do anything. Whatever the narrative was, I kind of had to follow it. GB News is there to provide a voice for those who have been ignored by the establishment media. We think different things. We've got a different style. GB News is here to be optimistic and positive about the future. It's real kind of dynamic and flowing with the audience very much at the heart of it, like a big family. Here at GB News, we talk about the things that matter to you. Hearing the voices from right across our towns and cities, especially our towns. All sides of the argument represented with a heavy dose of opinion. We're on a mission here to make a difference. And the GB News family really is here for you and whatever time of day you can watch or listen. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Welcome back to Headliners. Controversy amongst a bunch of posh people now in The Telegraph, Adam. Yes, uh, the BBC's been blasted for showing a sea of EU flags at the last night of the proms. Um, people were giving away free flags outside. Mm. So that was obviously encouraging. People didn't, people didn't turn up with them. They were giving away. The I've BBC. always got my EU flag. Oh. <laughs> 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 but, but the BBC have been criticised for it, which is a little bit unfair because they didn't give the flags out. Yeah, they're filming what's happening, but they were. The flags were there and they were seen, and um, I'm sure you're obviously in support of it. That's it. I mean, Paul, uh, this, it does seem a bit ridiculous. To no, I agree. Actually. It's, not, it's, it's about uh, the Albert Hall. It's their policy on flags. I, I, I agree with the. the I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy to, to have a pop at the BBC on some things because they, you know, particularly since. Because they don't book you. Well, because they don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do, but I'm not telling you where because I want them to keep doing it. Um, but uh, one, one thing I would say is this this is great fodder for The Telegraph and things like that because, like Adam said... By things like that, you mean GB News? No, I don't mean GB News. Okay. GB News is great. I'm, no, I great. totally agree with you. And um, I love it. Yeah, we love there it. There we go. But um, I will get a point out, yeah. and it's my fault, not yours, Adam, or yours, Josh. But the point I'm trying to make is that, of course, this happens, and the reason they're giving out free flags is because they want us to talk about it in this there way. There we go. Well, job done. More mail. Perhaps that's not ketchup on those chips, Adam. I've got no idea what you're talking about. Oh, oh yes. Blamed. Um, there's a beast is um, blamed for the rise in number of girls who hit puberty before the age of four. When I read that, I had to read it, like, three times a day. Mm before the age of four and need hospital treatment. That's because you're a bit thick. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's mind-blowing. I can't yeah. even get my head it's around it. It's incredible, isn't yeah. it? Um, record numbers of young girls are hitting puberty too soon, with some as young as four, and experts blame obesity as a key factor. Now, I've got no idea how that works, but that's what they're saying. Um, they're calling it precocious puberty, and it's increased to 2,032 last year, which is up from 1,510. By the way, 1,510 is still a lot, yes. right? So it's about, what's that, 33% extra. Yeah, so, I mean, Paul, this is surely another indicator that the government needs to step in and... I mean, arguably, this is partly through lockdowns, so that's what they're arguing, people that eat bad diets and whatnot. At some point, it just... We have to start dealing with this food issue in this country. Yeah, you're right, and I'm loath to say you're right, on the basis that I hate nanny state, I hate big government, but... You know what? You get fat kids if you don't have big government. There you go, the mail again, and, Paul, my grandmother doesn't have this problem. Do you want to know why? Why? She's dead. Ah! <laughs> Grandmother's dead joke. Uh, baby boomers and the silent generation, I don't think there's a silent generation out there, to be honest, are blaming supermarket self-checkouts for increasing loneliness and wiping out one of their last remaining social interactions. And I get this. I'm someone who likes a bit of a chit-chat, mm. you know, and if, if you are a, a lonely older person who is not having too much interaction, the idea of meeting someone at the checkout, which mm. is kind of not contrived, has to happen, a natural thing, and that being taken away must be a big thing. But on the flip side, self-checkouts are brilliant for stealing. 
overstick. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I mean, Adam, they, they talk about here about weak ties. These are important, aren't they? they well, they add up eventually. I'm yeah. only here because I've had, had a chat all day. <laughs> yeah. I sometimes, I've, you know, I've been on tour and I've realised that the first conversation I've had all day is with the sound technician. Because, you know, we, you know, we, 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 well, we watch Netflix and things, so we're not going to cinema as much. So you're not even having a conversation with someone who's ripping a ticket up. Then you go to self serve. I go into my local supermarket. And you, you, don't, you don't make eye contact with anyone. There's something so impersonal. You walk in, you get your stuff, the staff are doing their thing, and then you leave. It's like the only thing that's happened is that they've got your yeah. money. You, yeah. It's such a... It's such, I, I want to have just eye contact, just something with other... Who works there. Just You walk in, take yourself and walk out. Then you go to the zebra crossing and the person goes through rather than in the old days where they would see a person stop. It's not yeah. this weird wall now. The first one's allowed to go through. That's what it was like. I lived in Crouch End for four and a half years and the yummy mummies would go through. But my point is, because we're living into the lives, we're having less respect for others. Yeah. Absolutely. Bionic yeah. penis news now in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a real news <laughs> Well, OK. If, I, if I my, my grandmother been... could see me now, Adam, do this in 30 seconds. Go. A uh, man was born with no penis and one testicle and a bladder on the outside of his body and several years later have a life of, of bullying and a lot of trouble. Uh, he's actually got a penis now and he... They used something from here. They took something from here and then a vein from his leg and put it together. So... Really well, has, Paul, would you he, uh, show he, us? <laughs> no, he, he literally has a willy like a baby's arm. <laughs> Very good. OK, uh, what do you think, Paul, about this? I mean, it's, now, it's, it's I amazing say, medical technology. It, it is. All I would say, though, is this poor guy has split up with his girlfriend and now not only is it in the newspapers, but they're talking about, you know, the, his penis in the... He's got no... The guy's got no chance now, has he? You know... OK. But, okay. Hold on, why is the video over? Story? So let's oh. take another quick look at Monday's front page. Sorry, Adam. The Daily Mail, a hostile act in the heart of Parliament. The Times revealed... Oh, well, there it is, the mail! <laughs> the Times revealed spy suspect in the heart of power. The I, UK interest rates hike set to end, experts predict. The Guardian, 184,000 cancer cases in the UK this year were preventable. The Mirror, terror on our streets. The Star, great British bunk off. And those were your front pages. That's all we have time for. Thank you very much to our guests. Paul Cox, Adam Bloom, first time, excellent work. Great job. We are back tomorrow at 11pm with Simon Evans, Bruce Devlin and hopefully a well Nick Dixon. And if you're watching at 5am, stay tuned for breakfast. Uh, also maybe buy Adam's book and I'll let you know if I get booked for a certain gig in the future. <laughs> we'll see. Good night. Thanks for joining us. Good evening, my name's Rachel Ayres and welcome to your latest GB News weather forecast brought to you by the Met Office. So there's been plenty of heavy showers and thunderstorms around throughout today and they will continue during tonight. And this is because low pressure is starting to dominate the UK weather, clearing away that high pressure we saw during last week. So into this evening then, showers and thunderstorms